This morning, Marcel and Bart will go through a case study on the deployment of Agile IT for IT in the digital enterprise. So, a warm welcome, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen. So, we are honored to be here and to tell something about our journey from the last three years, how we did implement IT for IT within an IT organization. But when I heard these stories this morning, there are all kinds of models, um, ideas about digital transformation. And what we did do the last year was, how can we implement a model within an organization, in this case an insurance organization, and what kind of journey did we have? And we presented it in the form of an case, an, a case study. So you will see what we experienced, what we did, and how did we implement the strategic orientation of an insurer within our IT organization. And that's the story we will tell. That's our idea about that. Um, I hope it will work. Yeah. So we're already introduced. So I think that's not necessary anymore. Uh, some key effects about Vivat. Vivat is an insurer in the Netherlands. Uh, we have different lines of an insurer. We have PSC. We have an asset manager. We have a live corporate organization part and we have an individual life. So there are different parts of the insurer we support. We have 2.4 million customers in the Netherlands in this moment, and we are owned by a Chinese company. So I must say we are owned now for more than three years of a Chinese company. I am personally report to a Chinese lady of 38 years, and you see that it's very special to be a real Dutch company, which is owned by a Chinese company. And there are a lot of culture aspects in the way how you can act with a Chinese company in relation to what's going on in the Dutch market. And we learned a lot about that. We have different brands in the Netherlands. We call it Zwitserleven for the Dutch people, Real, Naugau and Actium. That are the brands we delivered in the Netherlands in this moment. We don't have any European exposure. We only have in the Netherlands exposure. And that's also the target we, uh, we have. And we are transforming to a digital insurance. We started with that in 2015, uh, 14, sorry. Uh, and I think it's very important that if you want to join this kind of transformation uh, routes, then also the IT organization has to transform itself. And that's what we are doing in this moment. And I think we are in the phase now that we are ready also to enable FIFA itself, the insurer itself, to a digital journey which they need for the digital transformation which is needed in the insurance company. Yeah, okay, can you go one yeah. back, please? Um, so I uh, represent Fruition Partners. We are a DXC technology company, meaning we're part of the DXC family, but we operate our own IT for IT uh, uh, department there. That goes from advisory services to implementation to managed services, basically all the things that we are also delivering at Vivat. Um, my part is running, uh, run from the Netherlands, we have about 400 people working there, and uh, globally, Fruition Partners is over 1,000 uh, employees. Um, you can see the other figures there. I think most important to say is that we joined Vivat on their journey in 2016, and we are still working together today. Okay, how do we elaborate our story a little bit? First, I will mention something about the challenges. What are we doing for Vivat, not only the IT department, for the whole uh, Vivat? After that, we'll explain something about our journey we had the last uh, three, four years. We will look forward what will happen in the next uh, uh, period. And after that, some learnings and also some conclusions from our side. Uh, this is a difficult picture. But I think it's nice to have also not only models, but also infographics. That's what you see over here. And you see on the lower part of this picture, the four strategic pillars of FIVOT. The first, first one is data. It was already mentioned this morning, data is a very important asset, I think, for all organizations, not only for insurance companies, but all the organizations uh, which will use data in an independent way. And what can you do with data, not only within your organiza own organization, but also in combination with all the data sets outside your organization, how many should that? That's, I think, one of the issues about data. Second par part is digitalization. It's called digital in this way. But digital, digitalization is one of our strategic pillars within FIVAT. How do we digitize our organization in the right way? The third one, it's mentioned before already by Deloitte, but also by the former speaker, customer centricity. How do you focus on the customer? How do you interact with the customer? What kind of relationship do you have with the customer? In the Netherlands, we are an inter intermediate insurer, so that means we are not used 
to interact real direct with customers. So we have to learn a lot in that area. And the last one, also mentioned this morning, many times innovation. It's important to have innovation on your plate and to see what are the possibilities in the world, within Europe, to handle with it and to see how can you incorporate that kind of things within your environment. Based on those four uh, strategic pillars, we as an IT company, we're on one side, we are running the business, so we have to reach out our SLAs, we have to reach out our KPIs, we have to do our business within the cost and the budgets we have. Um, we have to do our incidents, we have to do our problems, so all kind of normal acting as an IT company is part of running the business. And on the other side, we think that an IT company, and that's the reason that we changed our name from IT to DTC, Data Technology and Change, that we have to drive the change within the whole FIFA company. And that's what we are doing now. How do we do with that? For example, we have high performing teams, so it's not only a team with an operational side and a business side and an application side, no. We have one team, agile teams, based on Scrum, based on the safe framework, how can we handle all kinds of things within high performing teams. But also, we created IT automation. And I think we'll elaborate that a little bit more in the next slides. We created a pipeline in which we all collected all the applications we have in an automatic way. So our CI and CD pipeline is created automatically, and we need it to take the step forward to be in the digital age and to see how can we use digital and technology in a way that we see a digital area for us. But also compliant and secure is very important. So information security, it must be in place. In the past, we had a castle. Within the castle, it was not allowed to do strange things. We don't have a castle anymore. We have islands, and the islands has to be connected. So security is a very important topic to see how you can create it. And based on that, we have from the IT side some goals. One goal, I'm sorry for that, is cost containment. We know, I think every IT organization, but every uh, organization in itself is working on how can we use our money in the right way, but also how many costs do you need to run the business as usual. The second one is quality. How do we improve the quality? And quality is not only the delivering of the services of quality, but also quality in an equal way that we know that the business and the customer do get the same quality of services, of application, infrastructure, but also business opportunities in the way they can use it very easily. But also economy of scale is a very important thing, and also I mentioned this already, automation. If you look to the four challenges which I picked out, you see them over here. The first one, how can we reduce cost? The last year, we reduced our cost, not only the change cost, but also the running cost with more than 30%. That's a big amount of money. A lot of people said that's not possible, we'll, but we had to do it because our cost price was too high. So we leveraged on that one that we reduce our cost. We did it by leaving people, but also rationalize our landscape. So we make a landscape more easy, more easy to handle, and also we automate our processes, our IT process within the IT organization. So we need less hands to do the work which is needed. Time to market. Time to market is mean, uh, mean in this way, time to market for products to the customer. And the customer is not the business in our case, the customer is the person who pay the policy premium. That's our customer. So we want to have shorter timelines to get new products and also new services into the market. But also quality is an important uh, thing. I mentioned it already before. Quality is not only quality in defects, but also quality in delivering all kinds of services to the environment of VIVAT and also to our customers. And we did that by automation and also by orchestration. And the last point, compliancy and also information security is very tough. We have to get it in place. And nowadays it's very, uh, let's say, tough to get it in place in the right way that information security is always there. And as we are an insurer, we have also the Dutch National Bank who says to us, okay, it's very nice you have an IT environment where we will check your environment on more than 58 key controls. So I have to report to the Dutch National Bank about, let's say, the way how we act within our environment. So those four um, challenges we were worked on we said, okay, we don't want to only have, want to have it on paper, we want to do something with it, and we did it. 
but keep calm and use IT for IT to go forward. So basically, um, uh, back in 2016, we uh, joined uh, Vivat and we uh, discussed the possibilities to uh, handle those challenges and to work on those challenges. Uh, again, cost, speed, quality, risk, uh, had to do about uh, too many tools uh, doing the same stuff, had to, uh, uh, was about too many people doing manual work, and we uh, proposed to use the IT for IT framework for that. And over here you see a simplified view of that model. And um, we, we still use this picture to communicate to people within Vivat. And why is that? Because it's a simple model. It, uh, it is, it's not too complex in the way that, it, that, that, that there's a lot of information in that. Everyone recognizes the items in here, the capabilities in there. And it also shows that it's, um, that it's aligned, uh, holistic, end-to-end -end approach. And um, basically, um, most people of you, of course, uh, know this, uh, this model, but just for a little bit of explanation, um, uh, four value streams together, together making up the total value ch chain of IT. Um, every capability in here is already present in any IT department or IT company, so that's not new. What is new in here is that it's an end-to-end -end holistic approach and that we connect the capabilities to each other and that we share the data structures between uh, the data structure between the different capabilities. Most important data uh, item is in red in here. That's the service. Basically from an initial idea or an initial demand in the business, you manage that service element, that service object, all the way through its life cycle. And of course you try to do that with a uh, uh, look on the tools that you, knew that you need to use uh, to, to run through the pipeline. You look at the processes in there, you look at the data, um, you look at the APIs and interfaces that you need. Um, it's all in this module, and that's what we um, uh, use to educate that at uh, Vivat, uh, basically to come up with an end-to-end -end solution. And I would like to share with you the, uh, the, an overview of the journey that we did over the last couple of years, and that's this, this picture and we will focus on each of the steps a little bit uh, in detail later on. So back, back in 2016, we started with basically implementing a new tool for IT service management. So that was not a too, I would say, high level objective. It was basically a tool replacement. And of course, we already uh, worked towards some cost savings and quality improvements there. Um, it's actually the detect to correct part of IT for IT. Then we move towards the uh, CI-CD pipeline that Marcel already told about. We will focus on that a little bit later again. Um, all the way through portfolio management, project management, time writing, and currently we're focusing on financial management and we're trying to expand that even uh, more in, uh, in the next uh, couple of months. So you see where the different value streams uh, are located. And you also see some other elements here. Um, for instance, uh, we mentioned a couple of times the hackathon approach, which basically worked out really fine in the FIFA situation. The hackathon approach is where we, in a couple of days, prove a certain concept with, uh, with, uh, together with FIFA. And then uh, when, we, when we prove that concept, we take a couple of months to actually implement it end-to-end uh, -end for a small set of applications or a small part of the organization. And that's the approach that we took to very uh, quickly prove to the organization that these things actually work, right? So we are not aiming at large projects, um, uh, long-term approach. No, it's all very short and, and, and quickly respond and, qu and quickly show uh, effectiveness. And that actually um, uh, made sure that, that uh, the, the DevOps teams within Vivat actually uh, were in line to cooperate with us. Initially, they were a little bit hesitating because, of course, this, this type of uh, changing uh, the approach and changing tool sets is all scary and it takes, uh, it, it takes additional time. But after a year, these, these, these teams actually stood in line to cooperate with us because they really showed, uh, saw the advantage there. So we're going to take five um, parts of this journey and focus a little bit on that. On the top right corner, you see which part of the journey we're actually in. And I will handle the first one. Basic ITSM. Why did we do that? We will, we will for each of these parts, we will tell you why that was needed. Then we're going to discuss what we actually did, uh, show you how we've done it, and basically focus a little bit on the results. 
So what was the, uh, why, why we are actually working on that ITSM part? That had all to do with um, uh, uh, reducing the number of tools, uh, make sure that we were able to share the data that uh, was handled in these processes, um, come to a standard way of working as a basis, and of course, uh, as a side effect, uh, also uh, work on the end user satisfaction. This was to do about incident problem and change management, um, uh, CMDB and discovery, request management. Um, we used ServiceNow as the baseline tool set for that, and the second tool set that we standardized on was the Microsoft Azure DevOps uh, tool set, which will uh, become uh, present later on. And, yep, trying to click here. Um, and how did we do that? Well, basically, we tried to limit the deviations to the standard products as much as possible, right? Th this, it, it, this is not to do about um, uh, trying to map a special for FIVAT developed way of working into uh, tool sets and by that mm. creating additional implementation time and maybe create uh, maintainability issues. No, we focus on as out of the box as much as possible and also on co-creation, right? This is not something that we as a uh, vendor or a service provider uh, did for Vivat, no, we worked together in uh, a DevOps team for setting up IT for IT, which ensured that once we were a little bit further down the road, that Vivat could actually handle the results themselves. And of course, uh, a very important part of this uh, first step was the actual decommission of the tools, right? It's often forgotten that once you transform uh, or, or uh, transition to a new set uh, of tools that you forget to get rid of the old ones uh, or not finish the project totally so that you can actually uh, remove the old tool set and not make uh, the money saving that you, uh, that you expect. So on the right hand side you see where the, the, the most um, results in this uh, first step of the journey were in the cost savings part and also in the quality uh, angle. Thank you, Bart. The next step, I mentioned already CI and CD. Um, we thought it would be good to implement not only the technology based on ServiceNow and Azure DevOps uh, in a way that, let's say, uh, Bart explained to us, but it's also important that the applications which use your environment will be uploaded in this digital pipeline, which I mentioned already before. Because it's only not to get the technology in place, it's also to use the technology and to use also this digital way of acting within an IT organization. So what we did in the next step is to get some effect on our application people. How do we get all the applications in the pipeline? And that was in fact the next step we did. We did it based on the SAFE model. I don't know if someone knows this model. Some hands or yeah, not so many. Maybe uh, it's a model we use to organize our work in a way that you can see how do you get your portfolio and from the portfolio to the uh, the parts of the work you have back to the RTs, the agile release trains, and then in these trains, the work has to be done. And that model is based on SAFE. It's an open model, which I understand, so you can look at it, and we combine it also with the work of uh, ITSM, uh, yeah, it for it I'm sorry. And we did reduce the defects and the rework. What did we do? What we combined was the ServiceNow proposition in combination with Azure DevOps. So what we did, we use ServiceNow as a layer above everything. So in fact, it's the dashboard, the management control, everything what's necessary to control your IT environment and all the work you have to be done. And there also the projects, which we mentioned epics in ServiceNow, are stored over there. But if you want to work with it, we get some features, stories, and that was also used within the Dev uh, Azure DevOps environment. So we make automatically links between ServiceNow and uh, Azure DevOps. And that means that, for example, if you talk about deployment, if you talk about automated testing, we can do it in that way because it's an automatic train within the complete environment where we can do that. And also the updates are done automatically, so that helps us in reducing costs. It helps us in getting the quality uh, on a higher standard, so it helps us in reaching out our targets, which we already mentioned. As Bud already mentioned, we did it by hackathons. So I don't believe myself that we have a long journey and we put all on paper and we make all kinds of plans. I believe in doing, do doing things. So set people together in teams, let's do the work with them, see what's possible, what's feasible, 
and then act. That's important in what we did the last two, three years. Um, and in that phase, we have also the complete integration of ServiceNow and Azure. A lot of my people didn't believe that it would be possible, but because of these hackathons and because of the way that they see that it was working in the hackathon, they did believe that it was would be a good solution for them to work with. So it was not a threat. It will help them in working with this kind of technologies in our environment. And in this moment, we have more than 200 applications. More than 110 applications are already loaded in this automatically pipeline. So it helps us to reduce our cost and to improve our quality. And you see the results on cost, speed, and quality are improved in this phase. Then we go to the next phase, and that's the integrated portfolio management. From the 1st January of this year, we integrate the complete, complete sorry, portfolio management for Vivat in the ServiceNow environment. So we don't have any spreadsheets. We don't have other tools. We have one tool, and in that tool, we use the portfolio for whole Vivat. So also all the business changes. So it's not only the IT change, but also the business change, because our business IT alignment is very strong. Myself, I'm responsible for the portfolio management group. I'm the chairman of that. So you see that the alignment between business and IT is on a very high uh, level. And also investment management, looking for business case side, is implemented within the ServiceNow environment. Um, what we did there is to introduce service concepts. So if you talk about, for example, allocation of cost, ABC modeling, that kind of things are also implemented in our environment, and we use them only from that environment. So we don't have any other tools than only that one. And I think if you use and want to use data in a very rea reliable way, then that's very important uh, for us. And it's important to clean up your data. So we are sure that the data which is in this environment, we can use it directly for repos to the executive board or to the supervisory board. All the information is stated and is correct. And we have an alignment of enterprise architecture and the service portfolio. What we also create is new service models and definition of service models. It's also done within this environment uh, and already mentioned the integration of the enterprise architecture and, uh, and service now that's combined now based on the IT for IT framework. It's important to mention that every time again because that's our framework where we do our business uh, with. And this step has also results on cost, quality, and also on the risk side because on the financial way, you need also some risk to manage that, and we incorporated that in our environment. And then it works, yeah. The step we are working now is IT financial management. In fact, that's the next step after the portfolio. All the costs we have within the IT organization, but also partly on the business part where change is related to, we have that within this environment. So we have one integrated view on financial management how we can manage it without or within this environment. And that means that all the insights are there, all the uh, parts of the cost you want to have are in this environment. So it helps us to get clear what kind of cost do we have. And if we want to reduce them or want to know what's exactly going on in that area, what are the costs for that service, we can find that out this environment. Um, how did we do that? Now we defined, of course, the IT cost model because that's necessary to do that. We integrate the service now in IT finance administration. What does it mean by that? Our model is linked to our finance department. So we know that everything which is in service now is also in our financial department, and they are automatically rela related to them. So for example, if you hire some people, people are hired by HR, the hour prices of them are collected in the financial system and automatically they are updated in our ServiceNow environment and we know exactly what the cost price will be of the service we are delivering. That's an automatic train in our environment. In the past you have to put in all kinds of spreadsheets, it's not necessary anymore, we have it in this uh, in the system. And also what we get is all kinds of reports based on the information we need to report about finance. And this phase does affect cost and quality a little bit about risk, speed was not the highest priority in this phase uh, we get. And the last part, and we are working on that also, is how can we use all the data which is in inside this complete environment? Because a lot of people are working with business data, what can we do with it? Data outside the organization, but also the data in this environment, we can use it in a very good way. 
we are doing a lot of things about what can we do exactly with the data. So we are exper experiencing a little bit data scientist environment based on AI, based on uh, ML, machine learning, to get the data out of this, out of this framework and see what can we do more with it than only use it in the way that it's within the application. And that will affect re uh, cost, quality, and risk as we see it now. What is the overall result until now? Um, our staff is reduced from 750 people in 2015 to 400 now. I must say it's not only related to what we described uh, until now, but we reduced our staff in more, almost more than 50%. And that's a real challenge. And it was also a real journey to realize that. What we did also is upload more than 110 applications in the pipeline. That gives an effect on time to market. Our time to market is really three months. So we can update our environment very fast. And it helps our business to do more and faster business with our environment. But also our administration is more up to date. We know exactly which can kind of data is there and what's the, let's say, the reliability of the data in our environment. And of course, for us it's very important, we have to be compliant and we can prove now that we are compliant in our environment. And Bart will tell something about the next steps. Yeah, a little bit about what, uh, what is on the roadmap within VIVAT for, uh, let's say, the coming year. Uh, basically, um, of course, you want to uh, uh, complete that IT for IT journey. You want to make use of what's already there um, um, uh, and, and also uh, make it more mature. The approach of um, starting with hackathons, uh, do a, a, a proof of concept. Um, the advantage, of course, is that you have something in place very uh, fast but you always have some cycles uh, after that to make it more mature and, and uh, more complete. Um, and another thing which is required is what we call auditable DevOps. Um, you have the, let's say, the, 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 the dual approach from DevOps where you want to be flexible and agile, but on the other hand, uh, FIVAT requires that uh, audits uh, from internal people, external people are always, uh, always satisfied. So that's uh, something that we are uh, working on. Um, by doing that, that, that's what we do, by bringing all the other applications in the pipeline, uh, have some programs in place to mature the DevOps teams, make them uh, work more mature. It's uh, actually taking quite some uh, time and investment to uh, bring the, 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 the total DevOps change uh, to realization. Um, the governance risk and compliance process is, um, is, is something that we're focusing on now. And a very interesting uh, thing is that we have now this experience in uh, all that data that we have in IT and see if we can uh, use some of the principles to manage the data in the business side of things as well. So not only look at an application as, an, as, an, as something within IT that we need all the information from and we need to be able to manage that and need to be able to uh, check the life cycle of an application, but also look at the data elements in that application and how are th these being changed over time and how are they related um, somewhere down the line in another part of the of the chain. Um, but basically, uh, we, we, we have a couple of things uh, that, we, that we use for that. Um, we, we will uh, use some new modules within ServiceNow, specifically the governance risk and compliance part and the application portfolio management part. But there's also still some things going on and making sure that all these people still get educated. Uh, management of change and communication is, is a really important aspect and, and we need to continue that um, all the way down the line. And basically we expect that, of course, to result in all areas. Thank you. The last uh, uh, slide, uh, the key takeaways. We think, think big, so do have in your mind what's your target for the coming years, where do you want to go to, not only from an IT perspective, but also from a business perspective. And digital transformation, as mentioned before this morning, is a very important issue. It's a common rule and common line, but how do you implement that in your own organization? And I think it's important that all the IT organizations within, let's say, these big companies must realize how can we play a role in enabling the digital journey for the business itself. So think big. Start small. Uh, we did it with hackathons. So not big plans, but do it. See if it's possible. Use the technology. Use the models. 
get the people on board, because also that's very important, because in the first time, when people thought, oh, it will be a threat for me, it will somehow my work. No, I hope, and if you look back now, a lot of people like the journey we made, and they are proud about what they created the last three years. And that means act, act now, do the things which are necessary, and get small steps ahead. I always said, cross step is also ahead, do it and see where you come. So have a plan in mind, and a global plan, a roadmap based on IT for IT. It helps us very much that we have this model of IT for IT, because that's a framework where we can use all kinds of, as of aspects in relation to technology and in relation to the work you want to, uh, to be uh, done. MVP, so if you have technology, put it in place, see if it works, and see if all the connections will be in place. And also, and I think that has something to do with leadership, we are talking about digital leadership and all kind of things in that area, but also if you want to do this kind of things, make it a priority. Because most of the time, and I see it every day with all my people, they are working for the business, because that's very important. But don't forget yourself. Because if you don't enable yourself as an IT company, if you don't improve your own environment, you will be out of business. And I think it's important that an IT organization, in our case a data technology and change organization, will help and will create and will be an enabler of the digital journey and the digital transformation which was mentioned before by other speakers which uh, were here this morning. So make it a priority. And also communicate, communicate, communicate. Tell about it. Show what you do. Try people to get them involved in your journey because if the people are involved in your journey, you will see they will pick it up, they will create their own journey and they will be part of the total journey and that's what we need to get these kind of things in place. And also, that was very important for us, we choose uh, fruition uh, to help us in this journey because we are not an organization with all kinds of models. We have enterprise architects, we have architects, but we need also some backing from the outside world to challenge us in the things we are doing. And we were very happy with fruition because they do it in a very good way. And in the beginning of the project, they were in the lead, but now my people are self in the lead. So it's a movement now they are supporting us in the steps we have to make uh, the coming years. So I think, and we think, successful digital transformations requires also an IT for IT approach. I think this is our story, but, yep. and I hope it's useful for you. Thank you. Let's start with the investment, uh, the initial one million investment, or maybe it was an overall investment. How difficult was it to get the business and sponsors and finance to buy into it? Uh, for me, it was not very difficult uh, because what we saw that we have a very we had a very good business case which was presented to the executive board, and if the business case is positive, mm -hmm. then it's not a big problem in our company to get money uh, for this kind of action. So right. it was not a big problem. Right. Okay. Convincing business case. Yeah. Um, how is the implementation of IT for IT enabling innovation in the insurance business of VIVAT? Well, the, I think the most important thing here is that um, uh, VIVAT is now able to speed up uh, delivery and speed up the, 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 the chain from uh, incoming ideas, incoming business requirements, all the way down to uh, delivery. And specifically, we uh, assisted the DevOps team in a way that they can focus on their functionality which is basically uh, uh, the innovation part. And we took, we took away a lot of hustle on the operational part uh, for the DevOps teams, right? We, we, that was all incorporated in the pipeline. So I think we gave them um, a larger portion of their time for actually innovating the, the VIVAT services. Maybe I can add something more. If yeah, you please do. Yeah. Because if you look to innovation, I'm also responsible for innovation within uh, VIVAT. And we have a separate team for innovation. We call it FINS, VIVAT Innovation Center, mm -hmm. where we create all uh, business options, but also technology options in innovation. And what we see is we try to connect those to the pipeline we use in IT for IT. So that we have a um, balancing act in what kind of new technologies will be in place, what kind of new business proposition will be in place, in relation to how can we maintain it in the right way, also focusing from all kind of key controls from DNB, uh, Dutch National Bank, that it will be in a very, I call it, safe way. Right. Yep. Okay. Good, thank you. Uh, did you have to train your staff in IT for IT? 
Yes, we did. We, I must say we educate our people, or we, we spend a lot of money in education, uh, more than uh, the common money which is spent for the people in our organization. Mm -hmm. It's a multiplier by two. And uh, we have an all-you-can-train uh, concept, and uh, it's offered by uh, Capgemini. And all our people can use their education they need based on that portfolio. Right. And also IT for IT is also part of that, but there's more than only that. Yeah. Okay. And we think education is very important to get people on board and to yeah, have them also for the future on board. Yeah. Okay. It's a sort of incentive. So, thank you. Uh, Bart, um, how did you convince the customer that IT for IT was the right approach? And there's a second part to the question to give you a heads up, which is uh, <laughs> what was it that convinced <laughs> that, that, that See if it's the right approach. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that the, the, the most mm. important part was the end-to-end uh, -end concept. Um, uh, to be honest, uh, and I, I more or less said it already in the presentation, mm. when we came in, it was a basic tool replacement uh, project. And after we've done that first step, we uh, started discussions with uh, Marcel that if we would lift that up to a full IT for ID approach, we could actually uh, make much more benefits than just from the uh, ITSM uh, tool replacement part. And I think the overall concept and the end-to-end -end approach uh, convinced him, but I'm really interested <laughs> if I'm right. <laughs> uh, let's say three years ago, I was presenting to all my people that we have to improve and to automate ourselves. So I mentioned that time that all the IT processes has to be automated by more than 70%. So the IT organization must be the first part of the FIFA organization who would be uh, automated. Because most of the time we see that we do work for the business to automate the policy systems, the portals, and so on and so on. But I said, okay, I want to be automated all to myself. Mm -hmm. So I mentioned 70% of all our process has to be automated. And then I linked it to, let's say, the end-to-end. And then the two came together, and right. the result you show it. Okay. Uh, question on DevOps: What what are your quantitative success? What is your quantitative success metric with respect to application deployments or updates to the enterprise? And can you share any war stories? Maybe the person who asked this question, I can give him information in depth <laughs> if he need of her. Right. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's a little bit difficult to give that answer because in the Netherlands, we are in a phase of strategic reorganization, right. and it can be that FIFA will be sold to another insurer. So right. there is information I can't give. So I'm sorry, this is okay. part of it. No, yeah. no problem. No, no that's good. Um, and uh, I'm looking at time, so we're, we're out. Last question. Uh, can you share any tips on how you engage the hearts and minds both for the IT operating model transformation and your IT for IT adoption journey. Yeah. Engaging the um, there, there are a lot of initiatives that, uh, that help with that. Um, so we had uh, demo sessions. There were um, annual innovation days within FIFA where we also uh, uh, helped and, and described this whole uh, story. Uh, we had uh, walk-in moments. We, we uh, made the teams uh, uh, aware via formal education programs. So actually a lot. Um, different things. Yeah, a lot of different things. And I think it, 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 uh, one of the more important things was that from a leadership perspective, the same message came across as well in, I think, guess regular uh, staff meetings and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think the most important thing in this one is ownership of our own people. So I can announce that it's very good. He can announce it's very good, but the people do and need to believe that it's right, the right way to go. Right. So I think we had a lot of energy to put it on the people itself, that they can create this journey themselves, and not only by all kind of management speaks, but mm -hmm. also that it will deliver something for their work. I think that's the most important thing. Yeah, personalized. And you talked yep. of the, the pride they feel now yep. in what they've yep. created. So yep. uh, clearly, that's important. It, clearly it's working. Yep. Yeah. Gentlemen, thank you both very much.